morning everybody mm. Mm. it is dreary and cold and I have not felt like doing conscious coffee the last well since the last conscious coffee how about that went to Seattle and enjoyed Seattle after a beautiful trip in in Florida and everything and then came back and school started and you know I think that for everybody school this year has definitely just been an interesting thing has it not for all of the parents out there it has definitely been an interesting thing and my school has I've got two kids that are actually in school I've got two kids that are homeschooling and yeah it's just been kind of like this like topsy-turvy. I forgot to silence my phone, guys. Hold on. Um, we will probably get interrupted because I ordered food, so I ordered a smoothie. I didn't want to go out in the rain, so if you hear the doorbell ring and I have to run and go deal with that. Um, yeah. So today, though, I was sitting here and I had this beautiful experience. I'm going to write about it next. Next up is my article as I'm just kind of chilling today and getting a whole bunch of work done before my babies come back home uh, from school. So I had this experience this weekend uh, that was so invigorating, igniting might be a better choice of word. It was a very igniting and there was this moment in a connection that I was having where I felt so sensual in my own skin that it almost made me feel translucent, you could say. And it was just this experience of really, truly being present in the moment, present in the that that this container that we live in was no more. No, no, kitty. Uh, that this container that we live in really was no more between myself and two other people. And I realized in this moment, like my turn on for life and for the individuals that I was blessed to experience this moment of just sitting in space with, it it was truly just this moment of sensual expansion. And that might be something that's kind of hard to comprehend, you know, why I was feeling extremely turned on. You could say that there was a horniness to me. My sexual energy was charged up. I was hungered by the situation and craving and wanting to just kind of devour, devour these individuals. And I did not, you know, nothing, um, you know, here you go. No sex happened. Sorry, no sex to report. But what was going on was that this concept of sensual presence and sensual connection had me just, you know, completely invigorated and expanded and in my heart center because I was so present with these two people. So what does this mean? You know, what is, what is sensual expansion? What is sensual presence, right? And it really does come down to that sensual presence is number one, complete and utter total presence in yourself. A lot of the time you hear me talk about embodiment when I'm working with my clients, I definitely talk about embodiment with them. And a lot of the work that I do with people is to help them to embody themselves. And, you know, people will come to me and they go, I think, I think, I think. And I go, what is the sensation that you are feeling? What is the sensation in your body? Where do you feel constriction? Where do you feel, you know, opening, expansion, warmth, tingling, chill? What is going on inside your physical body? Because that is what is so important. We tend to enter any new subject area of our life, any new experience with only limited sensory, okay? We limit our sensory in every single thing that we do, especially, and get this, this is the sad piece, especially in our sex. We tend to not come into it in full embodiment. 
we tend to really step away from ourselves and we do it because it's referred to as armor okay energetic armor spiritual armor emotional armor is because we all have wounds we all have these different things that we're scared that if we open up in vulnerability in the bedroom to our partner in different ways with different people and that we're going to get hurt and we don't want any repeats of the pain so we armor up we go and we protect ourselves and we might say i'm protecting this person i don't want to hurt them i don't want to be hurt i feel like i could get hurt here and what it that causes is that armor to rise up and it limits our ability to actually feel into fully and be embodied and to feel into the situation so if your sex is sucking if your sex is mediocre if your sex is, you know, yeah, I, it was great, but I feel like there's so much more. You're not tapping into the big toe of God, as I like to talk about. You're not fully expanding yourself and fully feeling. Then what is going on is that you're coming into your sex with limited sensory. So you're not using all your senses. You're not really breathing it in. You're not feeling it with, you know, like at every single level. You're not allowing yourself to soften into that intimate moment into that vulnerable moment okay hold on i've got to check and see if my if my smoothie is out here and just come with me i heard rattling and they have just been really bad about like not ringing my doorbell when i order something and just popping it down on my stuff. all right no not here yet okay so we tend to not embody ourselves fully in our sex and sensualness allows us to embody ourselves. We, when we are feeling the most sensual, when we are feeling ignited and, you know, because sensualness is about the presence about the feeling like that's why that's why when we look at one person we might go oh god you know typically what it's a she we will say she's so sensual we'll say she's so sensual there's just something about her there's mysterious it's drawing it's attractive there's something there and it is a sensualness and then if we look at sexiness right and we all know what sexiness is right and it's like oh yeah if if i flashed my breast at you well that might be something sexy oh boobs ooh nipples ooh ass Ooh, genitals. Oh, oh, skin, flesh. She batted her eyes at me. There was like, there's this, and there's like a sexiness. Oh, that's a sexy dress, you know? And what does a sexy dress mean? Typically, it's tight. Typically, it's low cut. Typically, it's something that is, you know, that form fitting has a certain sheen to it. it shows a lot of flesh. We relate that to sexiness right? We relate that, that we can call somebody who doesn't even really move with any sensualism with no flow. They can still be sexy because we get caught up on flesh being sexy. Sensualness is something different. You could be wearing a potato sack and be sensual, you know, and I do bring it down to clothes because that's just the easiest fat position to take with this. You know, somebody who is sensual, who is fully embodied, there's my drink and my food. Okay, somebody who is sensual is fully in their body. Huh? Yay, 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 me. Thank you. Hey, it's real. I'm really at home. I'm really ordered food. There ain't nothing fake going on around here. Um, that looks like a chunky smoothie. I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, oops, I forgot. Ginger shot. Uh, somebody who is sensual is embodied. They are present in their own flesh. They are feeling themselves from the inside out. 
and they are expanded within themselves. So they are taking on that sensation of like the breeze on the skin can arouse them, can turn them on. And they can have, you know, like looks with other people and there can be just this, this breathing in, breathing deeply into the moment. And anytime we do something like that, where we can just drop down, surrender, approach a situation, our, all of our five senses, you know, with our full being, to be embodied, to use all the senses, and to come at that from that presence level, guess what happens? You ignite, you get charged up, your turn on is so much higher for life in general. And yeah, if you bring it to the bedroom, if you bring it to a partner, then the turn on is even more there. And guess what happens to your sex? Well, when you are operating from all your senses, when you're not armoring up, because when we armor, we block the senses. When we just let all that go, then our sex ends up being fucking phenomenal. That's what happens. That's that gourmet sex. That's where we get that from. Sorry, stirring my smoothie. pretty good so that's what we get when we really operate from that full sensory I put on the title it is key you know that sensualness is key over sexiness sex sex is like the sexiness aspect we could say sensualness is gourmet and sexiness is fast food Sexiness comes and goes. Sexiness is that quick hit. Sensualness lingers. Sensualness expands us and opens us up. It's like it opens all of our pores up and reveals us to so much more. Where sexiness, we go, oh, that's sexy. And then, oh, that's sexy. And we can bounce really easy. And it is very short lived. Okay. And if we don't keep it going, if we don't keep a certain energy about that sexiness, then it just dies out. Where sensualness, sensualness is that linger. Sensualness is more like a really good for us women. It's more like uh, you could relate it on the scale of orgasms. Like it's that good cervical orgasm that fills you up and that that penetrates your heart and your soul, not just your physical body. And it just really opens and expands you and it lingers, you know, for a week, uh, 10 days, it carries with you. I, I can remember orgasms from, you know, years back that were so deeply penetrative. It wasn't just about the entry. It wasn't just because a lot of times in sex, women get entered a lot, but we don't get penetrated to really truly penetrate because the majority, I'm sorry guys, the majority of you guys don't really fully understand how to penetrate a woman, but man, you certainly know how to enter a woman. And when the woman has these, you know, has armor up and if you as a, as a man have armor up then that's armor meeting armor and the disconnect is pretty severe and that's what causes that that inability to truly feel because we're not both both sides are not coming from more of that sensual aspect all five senses so it is more like that deep cervical orgasm which is when a woman has a deep cervical orgasm, it is so filling, so invigorating, it just expands her, it fills her up. It is like a massive deposit into the emotional, hormonal bank account of the woman. And it is, it, it's healing, it's detoxifying, it does magical things, okay? Where sexiness, it's more like just that quick hit. It's more like what a clitoral orgasm would be, what more like a, what was referred to as a masculine orgasm. It's just that quick hit that, that comes in and it's boom, yay, and then yeah, gone, right? So, but that is, and with sexiness, a lot of the time, a lot of people who are perceived as sexy, and those people are not vulnerable. They're using their sex even as armor. There is a, a certain level of disconnect that they can just, they're numbed out to who they are. And they're using that sexiness to get gratification, to get support, to feel good about themselves, to do all that. Where sensualness is all around surrender. It's all about expansion, surrendering, and just letting yourself flow in, melt, that melting sensation. So why is it key? 
why is it fucking key? Well, it, should it be obvious that it, it is key because, you know, in the land of manifestation, in the land of law of attraction, if we're armored up and we've got, you know, these nasty self-fulfilling prophecies kicking in, if we have a limited or crap value for ourselves, you know, worthiness issues, self-love issues, and then that shows that we actually have armor around our hearts, around around really being inside our bodies. And I've heard a lot lately about, you know, and even myself, I've gone through like phases of just going, I don't love my body right now. I'm not loving being in this vessel. And I hear that a lot from people in general right now. And I know that, you know, COVID and everybody's like kind of sitting down and they're in their houses and now we're moving into fall and there's, you know, hurricanes going and everything. This cat, come on, stop. Um, it's everything has kind of kept us over the course of 2020 from expanding, from connecting. So we're not getting the physical touch that we need. We're not getting, you know, the outside energy that we need from from going and doing and allowing ourselves to be outside, from absorbing just, you know, natural vitamin D, breathing in the air. I see people constantly just hiding and we're already prone to hide because we're uncomfortable in this vessel as it is. We're not trusting exactly who we are we already have issues around loving ourselves around seeing ourselves and then we you know 2020 has really just kind of shoved it all together and pushed us into into this nasty little closet and in that nasty little closet where we're just stuck with ourselves we're now trying to numb ourselves out even more and when when we are having sex when we are doing these things it is just that quick hit and it is all this armor 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 meeting armor and we're not really dealing with with ourselves so law of attraction talks about you know like we have to in if you want to if you want to bring in what you want to call in good shit into your life if you truly want to have good shit hey jason hey christian hey jaunty all of a sudden everybody started popping up hi misty michael randall i saw addison on here rick um if you if you really truly want to call in good stuff into your life how are you ever going to get good stuff to manifest into your life if you were focused on the negative okay so if you're focused on the negative and this is where all your attention is and this is where all your energy is being applied to how do you actually expect to manifest the good stuff in your life whether that is a good orgasm or more money or a better relationship or a house or health or just feeling good in your skin if you're constantly just staring at yourself in the mirror we're going to bring it right back to body stuff right now you know because that's like where a lot of people are at right i'm hating being in my flesh i'm not liking my body i'm not I'm not I'm not well if you're constantly in the state of I'm hating on myself I'm hating on you know this extra weight in my tush this extra you know you know I feel like I've got an extra tire around my waist whatever the fuck you're telling yourself if you're really truly focused on that then how are you ever going to have the motivation or the desire to do the things that are loving for yourself like getting proper sleep like eating the right foods like exercising you know like taking slowing the fuck down and giving yourself some rest time you know reading meditating whatever those things are you know what those things are and if you don't know you're more than welcome to reach out to me because i do this for a living and tell people what the good things are you're not going to have the motivation because motivation, it does come from a place where we have to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. We have to have had enough. But when that having enough, it's because we're now feeling so like crap that we're going, wow, if I don't start loving myself, if I don't start giving myself time, if I don't start applying different things to me for me, then nothing's going to change and everything is going to crash on me. And that's what, and we do know that at our core. And a lot of people choose to just ignore and just continue doing the bad things, right? But then there are the few that go, "Fuck this! I'm gonna, I'm gonna just start right here. I'm just gonna start right here, and I'm gonna start applying my focus over here." 
And the, then they're out of those, they start applying their focus and they start seeing re results and rewards and all of that good stuff. There are still a few more in that group that go, okay, yeah, this is a really big challenge right here. Like I really struggle around whatever that is. So I have a lot of resistance to that, right? Because when we struggle, when we find it hard to do something, when we are really fighting with ourselves and it's a push, that is saying there is resistance around this. So what that means is that basically your beliefs and your desires are not lined up. Okay, your beliefs and your desires are not lined up. Therefore, you're not in alignment. That's what's causing that resistance. You have armor up towards it because you've had bad experiences. There's wounding there around that. And that's what's causing that resistance. You're feeling that because you're fearing having a result that you've had in the past occur again. So what do you do? Uh, well, I really want that to change. I really need more money in my bank. I really need, you know, my body to do this. I really need blah, 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 blah. I need more sex. I need better sex. I need intimacy with my partner. I need to be seen. I need to feel desired. But I haven't had blah, blah, blah for this time. This happened the last time. This always happens, right? And we use those kinds of words. And words are so potent and so dangerous and so powerful all at the same time. But if we take our attention and we move it toward something that has lesser resistance, okay, something that is easier for us to work on, guess what happens? If we bring our attention over here to something that is more of ease, something that we can actually buy into, and we start applying our attention to that and working on that and working with it and getting into the flow of that, do you know what happens to the rest of those subject areas that you have resistance to? The knots start to untie. The knots start to untie, you start to have less resistance because you're less resistant over here. You're expanding, you're building momentum with ease. You're building momentum around opening, surrender, vulnerability. And that right there, it ripples out into everything else and it allows you to actually create really good shit in the areas that you have resistance to. So if you're applying all that attention over here, just shift over here, okay? Just shift over here. So it's like, what is it that you need to do for you? Because any act toward doing something for yourself that is moving you into an expanded, more turned on, more healed, more just beautiful state of being, bringing you joy, happiness, gratitude. If those things are at play in any subject area and that's what you're going for and that's where if you can find just one little area and you start to do that, then, then you start to tap more into your body. Now you can become more embodied. So because that resistance, that constriction is also that armor, it's also that prevention okay, of you actually leaning in, surrendering, being more vulnerable. So if you can access just one area that's a little bit easier for you to access and you do that, then, then you start to embody yourself. Then you start to, your sensory erupts. It builds, it expands and you can get, you can access, I should say, you can access that sensual state and that sensual state is where life just feels fucking great. It just feels so good. It feels interconnected. It feels expansive. It feels as though you are a powerhouse. It feels that you can just mesh with everything and everything is beautiful and you love on everything. That, that is that sensualness. That is that sensualness that you can really truly lean into. And from that place, I mean, doesn't that sound yummy, right? It's yummy. Well, if it's yummy, guess what manifests from a yummy state? More yummy shit, right? It's yummy, yummy, yummy. We manifest from that yummy state. It feels good. In that state of feel good, we magnetize to ourselves more that feels good. We magnetize to ourselves things that we have been desiring. And you know what? They come really, really quick. It does not, this is not something that has to take you the next five years to figure out. It's just about finding where is that space that I don't have a bunch of constriction, that I do have feel good around, and how can I lean into that? Stop eating my flowers. Cats. 
So lean more into that, okay? And yeah, that's why it's key. The sensualness is key because it opens up your manifestation gateways because it makes you feel good, because it makes you feel intertwined with everything. And when you are feeling as though you are a piece, a humongous, beautiful piece, a powerful piece of all of creation, of all of the universe, and you realize that pieces of you are operating at all these different levels and that the universe is manifesting through you, through your wanting, through your yearning, through your cravings, through your desires, all of that. Those things are coming to you so that the universe, so that God can expand, so that life can be experienced because life is about expansion. Life is about birth. Okay. And whether we are birthing a child or we're birthing a business or we're birthing something else, it does not matter. It's always about creation. Okay. And creation comes from a state of being able to expand and truly feel. So message today is get embodied, get embodied, allow yourself to truly feel, get your mind off of the quick fuck because that's not going to give you anything. And I'm telling you, like, if you're just quickly fucking your partner just for that quick release, then how are you actually standing? You know, where? how are you showing up in life? How are you showing up at work? How are you showing up with your children? How are you showing up with your health? How are you? What are your expectations around your money? What are your expectations around anything? Because I guarantee you that you're going to find that quick fuck energy. I'm just going to get in and hit it and go. I'm going to get my release and go in so many other areas of your life. But if you slow down in just one area, if you bring an embodiment to one area and you can tap into that feel good space and you focus in on that and you expand it, it will ripple out into everything else. And those difficult subject areas of your life, they'll start to not be so difficult. So... Yeah. All right. So embodiment, pay attention to your sensory. Try not coming into a situation like when you enter into any new, it's my last thing and I'm going to let you guys go. If you enter into, you know, a new subject area of your life, like let's say you leave your house and you go to work or you are go out on a date before you actually enter into that new frame of of, of space. Okay. Just pause for a moment, breathe into your body, tap into every aspect of yourself. Okay. Like check yourself really, truly. Am I present in my body? Am I breathing deep into my body? Am I, am I uptight and tense or am I soft and relaxed? Can I feel my heartbeat? Am I, is my brain bouncing all over the place? Am I worried about this and that? Am I actually still at work or worried about my children? What, where are you at? I want you to really truly come into this vessel right here. Who you are, this body that you have been given to live out this life experience in. Come into it and feel yourself. Ask yourself, what are the sensations? What are the sensations in my body? How am I feeling? Not what I'm thinking. Okay, and before you actually engage with any other human being on this planet, just pause and do that and then see how your reaction and how their reaction, what that engagement is actually like, including your sex. Like before you touch your lover, before you really connect with them, and I mean like seriously, before you even like just touch Get present with self, get present in life, get present in that space and watch the magic happen. Watch how that changes, alters things for you and expands who you are and allows you to go so much deeper, so quicker, so much quicker. All right. So on that note, uh, local people, I have a workshop. I think I have four spots. I, yesterday I had five today. I have four. I have four spots left in my tantric sex magic workshop that is coming up and the it is will be held here in Plano, Texas. This is a local in-person workshop. There will be no sex happening. I'm going to just make that very clear. This is a PG-13 class rated for my my sailor mouth. Um and we will be talking about 
law of attraction manifestation the power of sex in it sexual energy and i will be showing teaching you about how strong our sexual energy is in the manifestation process how we can actually access during orgasm during that deep connection how we can actually access an even stronger power to manifest down our blessings into our life to call the things that we want and to magnetize them all the quicker to us so to basically put law of attraction on you know on steroids and just make a like that and it just pops for you and we can access that through our sex but there are some certain keys that have to be learned and it practiced in order for you to be able to access that so this month you'll see in the comment section a link to um a link to that workshop here locally in the plano area it is open just to 20 people maximum because of covid we are following all covid guidelines if you come as a partner you will as a partnered you will remain with your partner if you come as a single because it is open to singles and couples you will be partnered with somebody in the class and um and there is it's just basically just working through some very basic simple sex magic techniques and practices and then in the pdf that you will be getting you will get that and that'll go home with you and that's where you get to get into the really juicy um more yum yum stuff that you can that you can definitely explore and experience that might require you to lose a few garments that we're not losing in in class for sure so Outside of that, there are also local, um, lots of local things going on. I know Addison Bell has her has her goddess circle, Aphrodite circle coming up tomorrow night. That is a free women's event here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So you're more than welcome to look on my website at www.kendallwilliams on my calendar on the events. It is posted there. It is on Meetup. It is on her website, of course. We also have the Tantric Integration Puja coming up this month, which is one of my very, very favorite workshops. I have Addison leads that one as well. And it is just, it is, I, I swear you move through so much stuff in this. It is so powerful, a beautiful, beautiful workshop. And then um, I am starting a men's group, a conscious men's group, where we will be working through 12 segments over the course of the next 12 months. This is a free event for men in the local Dallas Fort Worth area that will be coming out later today and be available as well so there is just so much going on i know that i've missed some a few things I've got bondage workshop coming up with michael harris in october and we'll get naughty class that is there's so much more you know just coming out and everything and um here in dallas we are definitely just kicking it up sticking with it educating sharing building community helping people move into beautiful yummy spaces stay centered stay connected with self with the divine and with their partner partners and the people in our lives so that we can live help, happy, healthy, free lives because that is how we access freedom is to feel happiness, to feel joy, to be healthy so that we can have the courage and the strength to also step into our freedom and truly be authentically us. All right. On that note, I love you guys. I love you guys. Um, we'll see if you catch me tomorrow or not. I don't know what tomorrow holds for me. I will try to make a conscious coffee. No commitments right now on all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, look for an article later. And I hope to see you at a workshop in the near future if you possibly can. Outside of that, anybody else globally who follows me or is interested in workshops or anything, know that I do offer a whole bunch of home study classes and I do global coaching. So definitely reach out to me if you have any questions, if you'd like to learn more about how to create and live that fuck yes life. As always, everybody, stop existing, start living, and I will catch you with another conscious coffee.